Jumping into the number five spot of the top five best microphones is the Elgato Wave 3, coming in at a price tag of $149.99. If you want to check out any of the five mics in this video, there's Amazon links below, 40 US, UK, Canada, and international links. And if you can't tell, well, each spot in this video, I will be using the actual microphone that I'm using right now. So what you're hearing is the Elgato Wave 3. All right, so jumping into it, the sound quality of the Elgato Wave 3 has a brighter sound and is lacking a little bit on the low end compared to the other mics on the list. Out of the box, this is also the most sensitive microphone on the list, but that's fairly easy to adjust. If you're looking for a mic that will pick up everyone's voice in the room, this is a great choice. So if you have an isolated studio environment, this is gonna be great, but if you have a noisier environment, there's definitely others on the list that are better. All right, let's talk about noise floor and rejection here. The noise floor here is the loudest on the list. It's still pretty good, but it's not as like perfect as some of the other ones on the list. And this obviously becomes more noticeable the more you turn up the game, but take a listen to the noise floor. And there it is. So yeah, a pretty sensitive cardioid mic. Now as for the onboard controls and inputs, well for the inputs, you either have the USB-C or that 3.5 millimeter connection. But obviously the only way you're gonna be able to use the mic itself is with that USB type C, that's just your headphone jack. Then on the front, you have a knob for the mic gain, headset volume, and mic slash PC mix. The mic has really satisfying tactile bumps, but does have a bit of wobble, but really nothing that bad. Overall, it's quite impressive how easy and quick it is to change and switch between things. This works really well. Then on the top, there is a touch sensitive button to mute the mic that then turns the RGB ring around the front knob, that knob that you use, it's gonna turn that red so you do know when it's muted and we're just gonna do a mute test, mute, mute, mute. Mute, 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 there, there you go. I don't know, that was kind of unnecessary, but yeah. Now as for the software, this uses Wavelink. Not as intuitive as Logitech's Blue Voice software, but you can download tons of plugins through the Elgato Marketplace, or you can download other VST plugins to customize the Wave 3 and make it sound however you want with effects, EQ tuning, and just a lot more. Great if you wanna use this for streaming, and I know there's gonna be a lot of streamers watching this, so, yeah. All right, to finish it off, let's talk about build quality. Corsair, which owns Elgato, always has a nice sleek design to all of their products. The mic itself is made entirely of plastic, but it does feel like a higher quality plastic and has a metal looking finish. The LED indicators for the controls are nicely diffused and easy to read, and the Elgato Wave 3 logos throughout are tasteful and looks pretty attractive, I think. The circular stand is completely made of metal with a large rubber pad on the bottom, and it's very stable, but it does sit closer to the desk. As for included accessories in the box, you do get a USB type C to USB type B cable, and then a mounting adapter. Lastly, you can also get this in black or white. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot. And that is the Deity V07U, coming in at a price tag of $169.99. But this has been consistently on sale for only 99 bucks. And for how good this microphone is, that is a freaking steal. All right, now the mic quality on the Deity V07U is impressive especially if you can get it for that sale price, that is that kind of enters and pushes it into the budget aspect. Um, but yeah, it has a clear full sound, is a little bit deeper. It also handles plosives very well. But compared to the number two and number one spot, it does lack in those upper frequencies of the voice. It's not quite as crisp and clear. Now you could definitely do some post-production if, if, if you're doing like videos and stuff like that, but well, you can hear how it sounds. I think it sounds very good, especially very good for 99 bucks, but for those upper ends, it seems to lack just a little bit, maybe for my personal taste. It's all subjective at the end of the day. Still, it is a great sounding mic, performs best when you're sitting close to it, since it is a dynamic microphone. Although it's not even as close to as sensitive as the number five spot. Now let's talk about noise floor and rejection. Now this does have a higher noise floor, but it's still impressively low. Take a listen and that is how it sounds. As for rejection, since this is a dynamic mic, it does a much better job at rejecting other noises in your recording space and impressively well with sounds directly underneath the mic, such as typing. So if you do have a louder environment, this mic performs very well. This could be great for streaming, uh, gamers, things like that, yeah. As for onboard controls and inputs underneath, there is a USB Type-C for power as well as connection, and then 3.5 millimeter connection for those headphones, as well as an RGB ring that is nicely diffused with different color options that you can change by short pressing the mic gain knob, which I actually just turned on and I realized that I haven't had the RGB on, but yeah, there it is. It's kind of probably hard to see in the brightness of the studio environment, but if you are a gamer and you do have kind of a dimmer setup, this might be kind of cool if you have your mic in frame like I do here. Moving on to the front of the mic, there is a metal mic mute button that when muted makes the RGB ring pulse red. We'll try that right now and you can see it. 
there we go. That works well. <laughs> On the left side, there was a knob for the headphone volume control, which can also be pressed in to toggle between the microphone monitoring and listen directly to your PC audio, which is actually very, very cool. As well, just a note, you do also get a higher noise floor or a louder noise floor when you have a higher mic monitoring setting, but that's only in the headphones and isn't actually in the recording. So just a note to, you know, not worry people if you get this and you're like, whoa. And then like I mentioned on the right side, there is that mic gain knob, which also controls the RGB right there. As for the software, there's no software. So that might be a big detraction uh, for some people and other people, they might not care. So I completely rank these mics based on the actual audio quality, taking into account noise floor and the actual overall sound of them. So if you do like the software of like of the Blue Yeti X, it's not like I recommend it less. Now let's finish it up with build quality. In hand, this feels pretty premium and heavy. The entire mic besides the knob is made of metal with a matte painted finish. I do like that it's white. This looks sick right now. This looks dope. The mounting location is also made of metal, which is nice for the durability over time. This comes from the factory with a pop filter, which is right here. I'm sure that sounds awesome. The mic mute button does have noticeable wobble and it would be nice to have some tactility on the knob controls, but overall this feels like a pretty premium mic and Dady did a really nice job. And to note, this like mic arm uh, was just in a bundle for like the same price as just buying the Deity by itself. So it might still have that. Check the links below. But yeah, this is like a pretty actually decent mic arm. It's not anything super premium, but I mean, you can't beat the price. It's basically free. So yeah, check it below. And lastly, you can either get this in black or white. So when talking about the build quality, it's either going to come in matte black or matte white. So yeah. But with that, let's move on to the number three spot. And that is the Blue Yeti X, which I'm on right now. This comes in at a price tag of $169.99. Now the mic quality on the Yeti X is crisp and clear again with that brighter sound, but with a bit more of that bass and fullness that the Wave 3, well, just didn't have. Not as much, still a very good mic though. And even though this has no pop filter, the Yeti X does a good job of handling the plosives and does a good job at sounding like a higher quality recording mic. As you can hear, it sounds good. Now, this has an impressively low noise floor, but it is extremely sensitive as this is a cardioid mic. Take a listen to the noise floor. There we go, that's how it sounds. This also has four pickup patterns, stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and bidirectional, which will change the sensitivity of picking up sounds from the different directions based on how you might wanna use this in different environments that you're in or just for different types of content that you might be using this for. So that is actually very, very nice. As for ejection, this is impressive for a cardioid mic. It is noticeably better than the Elgato Wave 3 and does a better job at filtering out sounds from key presses and mouse clicks. So if you are a gamer and you wanna use this for your like voiceover, might be good for that. They aren't inaudible, but they definitely are very muted. But again, this is still best suited uh, for a quieter environment, something that, well, maybe you have some sound panels on the wall or a lot of fabric taking out echoes. Now let's talk about controls and inputs. On the bottom, you have the micro USB for power, a 3.5 millimeter input for your headphones and a metal mounting location if you do choose to mount this. Moving to the front of the mic, you have a knob to control the mic gain, headset volume, and mic monitoring. To cycle between each of those controls, you long press in the knob and then to mute the mic, you short press. Very easy to use, especially with all those LEDs and icons and the LEDs are very nice. It's also very cool that actually on the mic itself, those LEDs will actually show you if you're peaking or if you're getting close to peaking, that is awesome. So right now I can actually see I'm not peaking, but if I'm going really loud, see that peaked for a second. So I can see that on the knob. That's actually pretty cool because right in front of me on the laptop, I am looking at my notes, not in Adobe Audition. So that is actually a very, very cool thing to have, especially if you're a content creator, if you're a streamer, that's pretty nice to have. All right, now as for the software, this has the Blue Voice software through Logitech's G-Hub. This company is owned by Logitech, just like Corsair and Elgato. There's tons of customization here, so I won't go over everything in detail, but you can see a lot in the B-roll. This is perfect if you want to live stream or you just like to fine tune your mic settings. There's sound effects, voice effects, EQ tuning for your headset, EQ tuning for the mic. You can customize all the LED lighting. There's really endless amounts of customization here and it's really fun to play around with if you're kind of nerdy and into that. But let's finish it up with the build quality. First thing you're gonna notice is that this thing is very substantial. Super solid build quality on the mic body as well as the stand with that matte black finish and dark stainless steel finishes throughout. Especially like this grill has that like stainless steel. It almost looks like the dark uh, stainless steel iPhone. Like that's kind of the finish 
looks super premium. It really does. The blue logos are nicely integrated and overall looks like a very, very attractive, expensive mic. The stand is super heavy and stable and has a large foam pad beneath the bottom. So that is nice for like, if you accidentally like hit the desk, although that was pretty hard. So we'll see how that did. And since the stand is taller, you don't necessarily need to mount this if you have a higher standing desk, which is uncommon in terms of mic stands. And that's a nice touch. Like that's how I'm using it right now. So this, this is a real example, normal 30 inch, high desk, normal chair, and this is how it's doing. However, if you do choose to mount it, it does not come with a thread adapter for smaller mounting styles. Overall, an extremely robust, but attractive mic. As for accessories, it just comes with the cable, which is micro USB to USB type A, and that's it, no other accessories here. But with that, let's move on to the number two spot. These get really good. And this is the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB-X, coming in at a price tag of $149, but consistently on sale for only $129. That's a very good price for how fantastic this mic sounds. Now, when comparing the AT2020 to the Deity, this sounds much better at handling the upper frequency range, which is really why this is in the number two spot. And I think you can just hear the complexities of my voice that this mic just does a fantastic job of handling. It has a really nicely balanced full sound, but it would definitely benefit from a pop filter to handle plosives better. But yeah, overall, still very, very good. Then the noise floor on the AT2020s is a bit louder than the previous mic, but it's still pretty good. Take a listen. That is how it sounds. And as for rejection, this is a cardioid mic, so it does pick up more sounds in the room. However, it does better at rejecting higher pitch sounds than lower pitch sounds. That being said, this performs best in, well, a quieter, more studio environment. It doesn't have to be a studio environment, but you know, put some sound dampening on the wall. If you if you don't have like sound deadening material, just like throw up a curtain or, you know, there's like a, a blanket on the wall that I just have draped on the wall over there. So yeah, you, you don't have to get like the nicest stuff to make a good sounding area, okay? As for the onboard controls and inputs on the bottom, there is a USB-C for connection, then a 3.5 millimeter input on the rear for headsets. Then on the front of the mic, there are two wheels, one to control mic monitoring your headset, and then one for the headset volume. There's a touch sensitive button to mute this mic, which to be fair, they work really, really well, but having touch sensitive be the mute button doesn't seem like the best idea, although everyone's doing it nowadays. No idea why, but it turns this blue color red. I'll do it right now so you can see. And then now you can hear stuff because, well, it was it was muted, but yeah, so yeah. It, it's kind of cool. It's a nice like glow. I like it, premium touch. As for the software, there's no included software. Now for the build quality, this has a thinner, lower profile design, but it's pretty dang attractive. Like it, it just looks nice. It just looks good. The mic itself is completely made of metal with a blue LED inside, like I showed you that turns red. The mic stand sits close to the desk and is completely made of plastic, so it isn't as stable as others on the list, but if you mount that, it won't really matter. Also, the USB-C is very close to the metal mounting location underneath the mic, which can be a bit annoying if you plan to move this mic around a lot. Comparing to the others on the list, the design is a bit more basic, Overall, still very attractive, but mounting it is definitely the way to go if you want the best setup possible for this mic. Whereas like the Blue Yeti X would be totally fine just sitting on your desk if you're not like gaming. As for accessories, you get a USB-C to USB type B cable and a USB type B to USB type C adapter and an adapter for larger mount styles. But with that, let's move on to the number one best microphone on the list. And that is the Shure MV7, which you can hear sounds absolutely fantastic. Now that comes in at a whopping $249. Is it worth it? Yeah, I mean, this is really good. If you don't have the money though, the other ones on the list are really good, but this one, so, so good. This is probably the one, if I had was only going to buy one mic, this would be it. The mic quality on the Shure MV7 is the best on the list by far. This is well balanced out of the box and has a full rich sound. It sounds very high end to professional. If you're planning on like getting started with a podcast, like, yeah, this is, this could definitely be a way to do it. Especially if you want to do like multiple microphones, this is a pretty inexpensive way to get a very high quality sounding mic. Plosives do peak when you get too close to the mic, unlike the Deity, but that's really nitpicking overall. The MB7 truly is very impressive. This is the more budget consumer friendly version of the insanely popular $400 Shure SM7B. And this does a great job at providing that professional audio quality at a slightly more affordable price without the need for a full audio interface. Now, as far as the noise floor, just take a listen because it's very good. 
and there we go. Since this is a dynamic microphone, it also has great rejection being the best on the list. Even sounds directly underneath the mic are very muted and can really only be heard if there is no sound in the room and you're actually listening for it. So if you are doing some like gameplay style content or anything like that, this is gonna be really good for that. This means you don't need the best audio environment. Your room doesn't need to be like, you know, crazy sound deadening on the walls to really get a very, very good recording at the end of the day. So you don't have to do a bunch of work. You're paying for, well, the kind of the tech to kind of help out with that. And it works really well. A truly impressive and high quality microphone for sure, for sure. Yeah. As for onboard controls and inputs on the bottom, there is a micro USB connection, which is just plug and play. I mean, you literally just plug it in and you're ready to go. But there's also an XLR connection, which obviously you're gonna need a full interface to run. But if you wanna choose to do it that way, well, you absolutely can. That makes this a lot more future-proof if you wanna get even more into it and more professional uh, in the future, which makes this a great content creation mic, especially for uh, starting creators, maybe YouTubers, streamers, people like that podcasters as well. Now, as for the controls, this is definitely the most interesting. They are all touch sensitive with these crazy, like the slider bar, which kind of works well and kind of doesn't. After you get used to it, it's actually fairly intuitive. It looks very cool and it looks super impressive. Uh, and it actually works pretty well. The only thing is the slider, like it looks like you would go from zero to 100% just from sliding it, but you have to slide your finger a couple times and it's just not as fast as just having a knob, but it does work. It's not super glitchy. Uh, it just maybe takes another second uh, over a knob. So it definitely works and you have gain controls and your headphone, and you can obviously mute it with just a little touch sensitive button. The mic gain has the green LEDs and the headphone volume gets orange. Holding on the two buttons simultaneously locks the touch bar, so no settings will change with accidental bumps. That's super nice, especially for like, if you are doing a podcast, and you have a guest come on and they, grab the microphone, well, you're going to change that. But yeah, you can lock it out. So they definitely thought this through. Now for the software, this uses Shure Plus Motive software. As you can see from the B-roll, this allows for some more customization like the mic's EQ, mic position for sensitivity, tone presets, and a lot others. Not quite as much as like Logitech's with the blue ice, but yeah, still pretty good. Now build quality on the Shure is solid. The body is all metal and the Shure logo is printed on the side and then the touch bar obviously along the front. Very simple design that's more sophisticated and understated, but definitely very high quality looking and feeling like it, it feels substantial. The mounting location is also completely metal. This also comes with a pop filter installed from the factory and a metal grill from the mic itself can be removed for cleaning, which is nice. As for the accessories, you get a micro USB to USB type B cable, as well as a micro USB to USB type C cable. And if you wanted an included stand, well, you don't get one. Deal with it. You only get, well, this right here. And lastly, you can either get this in black or silver. But again, if you wanna check out any of the five mics in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. And maybe if you made it to the end of the video and you're like, those are awesome, but I just don't have the money. Well, I've actually made two other videos in an ultra budget budget and then this video, which is, well, the more expensive, higher tiered one. So check out those videos right here and subscribe right there if you want. But yeah, Amazon links below. This is a consumer tech review and I'll see you guys in the next video.